a hottie class. So after we've done the high titer lysate step where we've uh, harvested, Ben showed you how to do that, um, we're going to go ahead and go on to the genomic DNA extraction or gDNA extraction. Uh, there's a lot of ways to do this. The old school method would be using phenol and chloroform where you would uh, separate the proteins from the DNA using an organic solvent um, with, the, with the chloroform and then the phenol. Um, uh, but newer methods have come that are a lot easier and simpler to use. And so we're going to be using a method today that, um, that we've developed here at the CPT uh, called the wizard uh, DNA extraction method. And in this method, we're going to use, uh, instead of chloroform and phenol, we'll actually be using uh, columns. Uh, and it'll be basically a form of uh, ion exchange chromatography uh, in order to extract the DNA. Uh, and separate the proteins. So just as a general overview, when you think about doing DNA extraction, there's uh, several major steps that you want to have. The, the first step is going to be concentration. So you're going to take your lysate, um, and usually I've tired of this before. We don't have a titer because this is just for uh, example purposes. But let's say it's at 10 to the 10th. Uh, generally, one mil at 10 to the 10th would give you uh, half a microgram of DNA. Um, and so you're shooting to, to get somewhere in the ballpark of a microgram of DNA is, is what we would like to have so that you can do further analysis, DNA sequencing and whatnot. Uh, if you have a lower concentration of, of phage particles, you're going to concentrate that with um, polyethylene glyc uh, glycerol, gly glycol, glycol, and that will allow you to concentrate all of the proteins, which will at this point will be the phage capsids and everything, into one part of the sample and pour off the supernatant, which allows you to take a large volume, like 10 or 20 mils, like you'll have in class, and bring it down to 500 microliters. So after the concentration step, you're going to then move to doing the actual DNA extraction and then purification. Um, so after concentration, you'll kill off all of the extracellular um, DNA and RNA using a nuclease mix. Uh, you'll inactivate that and move on to extraction where you bust open the capsids. Uh, that's where the resin is going to come in. We'll have um, guanidine thiocyanate and that will, uh, it denatures the proteins, which is the capsid, right? Let's out the DNA um, and then we have to separate the DNA from the, from the protein. And we do that by binding to a column that only binds the beads of this resin um, and it lets other things pass. So that comes to the, the washing step where then we're going to wash using isopropyl alcohol, uh, which will, will carry away the proteins, but it will leave the DNA in a highly pure state. The last step of purification on a column will be elution. And so in that step, we'll use hot water uh, that'll be at 80 degrees Celsius, and we'll run it through the column, which will allow the DNA to, to release from the beads uh, and that will be in our elutin. Uh, and so after all those steps, then we're able to quantify the DNA. We can detect purity using uh, spectrophotometry. We have a, a device called a nanodrop that looks at the different absorbance values in different places and can uh, give an indication of how much uh, contaminants are still left in the sample. So let's get started. All right, so to start with, we're going to add our peg. So You'll read this in your protocol, but we want to add the PEG, which starts out at 3 molar sodium chloride with 30% uh, volume PEG solution. We want to bring that down to 1 molar salt. So we'll add two parts of this to one part of this, and then that will give us a final 1 molar uh, sodium chloride, uh, which is part of how it binds to the column. It's starting out at a high salt gradient. So I have about 5 ml of solution right now of lysate, so I'm going to go ahead and add 10 ml to that. All right, so when you add this in, you'll notice that you can see the concentration difference and it'll, it'll kind of become cloudy, um, and that's normal. After you've put your PEG solution in there, you just want to gently mix it uh, by inversion. And that just allows it to, to fully dissolve. And then you're going to put it in the fridge uh, overnight. So you'll do this 
uh, one day, and then the next week you're going to come back and do your um, spin down for concentration step. All right, so after we've let this sit overnight in the fridge and then spun down at the centrifuge for 10,000 Gs for 10 minutes, um, you're going to have a, um, it's going to look basically the same. Sometimes you'll be able to see a, um, an area where the phage and peg solution has actually uh, bound to the side wall. Uh, if not, just note where it came out on the centrifuge. A good way to do that is put the, the name of the tube on the outside wall so that when it sits in the centrifuge, you know this is the side that has uh, bound the, the peg to the wall. And so after that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to just pour out the supernatant um, into a waste container. This does have, you know, potential biohazards, so definitely want to make sure that we bleach it before pouring it down the drain. Great. So we get the, uh, the lysate out, and now we want to really make sure we get most of it out because we're going to be, this is going to be our resuspension volume that's going to go into MgSO4, magnesium sulfate, as our resuspension buffer. Great. Okay. So now we add our magnesium sulfate, and we want to add 500 microliters. That'll be our resuspension volume. So you notice we went from having 15 mils of sample to 500 microliters of sample, which is uh, quite a reduction, and so it's quite a concentration. Using good pipetting technique, we're going to take 500 microliters. And what you'll do, you may not be able to see it well. Um, there's not much of a sticking here, but I'm going to just gently wash the wall of this uh, tube and you'll start to see a kind of transparent to opaque looking, um, how do I call it, like a film that starts to come, come off of the wall there. And once you get that out, you want to go real slow and you don't want to introduce bubbles because that can denature the proteins. Uh, but you're going to do this until you've wiped the, uh, the wall clear of any of the uh, film. And we want to try to make sure also that we don't get any on the tip of the pipette because then you're going to be removing the pipe that's going to get thrown away. Project your tip there. Yeah, so after we've done this, we're going to go ahead and transfer to a clean uh, epi, um, epi tube. This just makes it easier to handle. Um, you can set your pipette to somewhere around a mil. It's, it's hard to say exactly how much you're going to need. And you'll just go ahead and take up the contents there. Uh, try to avoid bubbles like I just had there because that, that can denature your, your, the protein of the phage. We'll add that to there. And this can be thrown in the trash at that point. Great, now that we have this tube uh, if you're not, if you're gonna walk away from it, make sure you label it up. Since we're gonna be throwing this tube away fairly quickly, we don't have to. And we're gonna add our nuclease mix. Nuclease mix is a combination of DNA and RNA, uh, and its purpose is to break down any DNA and RNA that may have come from somewhere other than phage particles. Uh, inevitably, some of the phage are already gonna have busted capsids, so we will lose a little bit of phage DNA. But we want to make sure that once we do our final extraction, we will only have phage DNA and we won't have any bacterial DNA. And so now we're going to let that sit for an hour at room temperature so that it can um, allow the nucleus to, to do its action. We'll mix it real thoroughly. Great. So now we've let this sit for uh, an hour at room temp and we're ready to go ahead and go to the next step which is binding it to the, the beads, the resin. Uh, and then we'll put it on the column. So to do that, we have a, a resin here. This is the guanidine thiocyanate, and we want to make sure uh, anytime we use this or dispose of it that we do it uh, in accordance with the EHS, uh, the environmental health safety, uh, because it is a, it's a toxic chemical and very corrosive. Don't get it on your hands. Um, so we'll, we'll go ahead and gently swirl this to stir it up. We don't want to um, you know, disturb the beads too much, we want to make sure that they're thoroughly mixed in the solution. And we also are going to add a mil uh, 
to this to this tube. So if, if you have more volume, you'll want to go to a two mil epi tube so to make sure that you have sufficient volume. And you are going to notice that the resin is it's, it's kind of viscous. And that's that's normal. And so when you add the resin, you notice that it, it kind of looks like the peg when you add it. And that's, that's good. That indicates that it's binding with things. Uh, and that's just a function of the little micro beads that are in there. We'll go ahead and mix those together. All right, so after mixing the resin, uh, you do that you know, four or five times. Then we're going to go ahead and set up our column. So we have our columns here. Uh, we do want to make sure that we don't touch the bottom side of the column because that's where the DNA is going to be coming out. And if we touch that with our hands or on the side of an unclean tube, you're going to go ahead and you're going to actually have uh, contamination in your DNA. So before we do anything, we want to make sure we just have a sterile epi tube that we can place that in in case we need to set it down for any reason. Um, that just is going to give us a sterile place to be able to insert that in. Once we've done that, we want to take our um, syringe. We've got a three mil um, syringe here. These are sterile, uh, which isn't quite as important as it making sure that it doesn't have any DNA in it uh, already. So these will be sterile here. Your lab instructor will help you get these out. Um, so then we just put that in there, making sure you know I'm grabbing it like this. It comes out. I'm always paying attention to where the end of this is. And if I need to, I can just set it in there for the time being until I can grab my pipette and the other instruments that I need. All right, so now we want to take all this sample and run it through this column. Um, but the first run, all it's doing is binding the beads. So all we need to do is, is insert it, and then we're going to waste it into our waste container that will be disposed of properly. So there's my first. So it's going to take a couple, make sure that it doesn't fall out. You can click it in if you need. Come there again, try to avoid the bubbles. Um, it's hard to do, you just have to be real slow with your pipetting so that you don't um, pipette up too far. Great, so now we're going to take it out of that um, tube here. If you're careful, you can get it to come out without sloshing everything around. We don't want to, to put any of this because this is going to be wasted, so we're just, we don't want to put it into that clean tube. Um, and then it'll take a reasonable amount of force, but we don't want, again, just like when you're doing filter sterilization, you don't want to push too hard, just slow and steady. It doesn't take very long. You go. And then we're going to insert this again back into our sterile environment. And then we can take off the um, syringe. We want to make sure anytime we're working with a syringe that we don't uh, pull back on the syringe because you'll create a back pressure on that column which could then cause it to dislocate uh, and could definitely injure the membrane and then we'll put that here. So after you have taken your resin and run it through the column you're going to go ahead and reuse the same syringe that you had. Um, reattach it with the plunger off and then we're going to wash the DNA like I talked about the washing step with 80% isopropyl alcohol. We're going to use two mils of isopropyl alcohol. Um, and so go ahead and add here one mil. If you touch the wall of the, of the um, syringe, you want to go ahead and inject your tip just so that we don't contaminate our isopropyl alcohol um, with any other DNA. So if someone after you uses it, it won't be contaminated. So that's two mils there. And once again, we're washing, so we don't need to worry about saving this waste. Um, so we'll take it out, being careful not to touch the tip, and we'll run it into our wash. Depending on how much DNA and contaminants are, are in the column, it's going to be easier or harder to run through. Um, this isn't too difficult on this one, so that's good. Great. So now we've done that a second time. So now at this point we want to dry the column before we then add the water 
that's going to elute. If there's any alcohol left in the column, um, it won't properly elute the DNA, uh, which will obviously cause a drop in yield. So we're going to add it back into here. And we can make sure this time we click all the way down so that's snug and nice, nice and tight there. We'll take this off and then we're going to go ahead and grab uh, a pair of scissors and we'll clip off the end of the, of the cap. So we just come in and we cut off the cap here. That's going to fall off when we centrifuge it. So at this point, we're going to take this and we're going to centrifuge it in the microfuge, micro centrifuge for, uh, I think, just 30 seconds and at max speed. And that's basically just going to pull a bunch of air to pull the rest of the isopropyl alcohol through the, um, through the column. All right, so after we've run it and made sure that all the liquid has gone through the uh, the column. Now we're going to add the hot water. It's really important in this step that we, uh, one, put this into a new uh, clean centrifuge tube because this is where we're going to actually elude our DNA. Uh, and so we want to be really uh, timely on this as well uh, to make sure that we're doing it while the water is still warm. Uh, so make sure you notify your TA to uh, have the centrifuge ready to go so that when you add the, the water um, you can immediately centrifuge. So what this is going to look like, uh, I'm not going to show the centrifuging part because that's fairly self-explanatory, but we've got water that's been sitting on a hot block. It's uh, nucleus-free water. It's very clean, and uh, it's at 80 degrees Celsius. And then we have this, and so we're going to add 100 microliters. This, this tube here will be our first aliquot. We're going to do this two times, um, and so we'll do the same thing twice. I'll just show it one time for illustration purposes. So we're going to take our P200 and we're going to set it to 100 microliters. Uh, we don't use our syringe for this one because it's such a small volume. We can actually add it directly to the top of the column. Have everything ready to go. Drop 100 microliters. Put it on the top of the column there. You'll notice that it easily holds the volume. And then we take this for centrifugation. Um, at the end, it will be here in the bottom. And we'll, I'll show you that in a second. Great. So as you can see here, we have the, um, the 100 microliters that came through. You can just verify that it makes it to the 0.1 mil line. Um, if you only get half of that, you want to make sure that you spin it uh, until you do get it. Sometimes if it's a really clogged column, it could take a longer or harder spin to make it all, all come through. So that's um, DNA extraction. Um, it's a pretty simple process with a kit and it allows us to be able to then go on to do sequencing and PCR and any other genetic manipulations that we want to perform on the phage.